Hi, Mick. Thanks for talking to me. G'day. Thanks for having me. You have done uh, four tours of Afghanistan. You're a special forces soldier. I'm a comedian. So I guess we both know something about bravery, I guess, <laughs> really. Yep. Just, 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 just relax. I'm just like you. I'm a normal guy. <laughs> so tomorrow's Anzac Day. Yep. You're 33, is that right? Yes, yep. So often we think of Anzac Day, we think of older gentlemen, elderly men uh, marching with medals and such. What, what is Anzac Day like for young veterans like yourself? Uh, look, it's the same. We're, we're there to commemorate the, the World War One and, and, and World War Two and, and all engagement veterans and to celebrate our own mateship and remember our, our mates that have been lost or injured overseas. And, you know, hopefully the public also reconciles that and, and says thanks to, to the younger veterans out there tomorrow. Are younger veterans, veterans of recent wars treated differently, do you think, from the first two world wars of Vietnam? Yeah, look, a, a little bit more awareness would be good for the young veterans. You know, young veterans are, are suffering, you know, great hardships at the moment. Uh, last year alone, there was 85 suicides. And uh, yeah, we, we need to focus on, on the recovery and, and you know, transition to, to civilian life for these young veterans. Why is that, do you think? Why aren't return services, living veterans right now coming back from these wars, getting the services they need? Uh, look, I think it starts with the Defence Force. I, I, I don't think the, the Minister of Defence is, is doing enough to, to hit the issue at the, at the grassroots level. And uh, it's an unfortunate you know, outcome because you know, people are eventually going to want to stop joining Defence if, if they know they're not being looked after. Could you tell me how your PTSD sort of manifests itself in, in your life? Yeah, look, uh, I, I lost, a, a, well, how do I, <clears throat> yeah, over a series of events, I lost, lost a fair few mates and, you know, we had, we had some pretty kinetic and, and heavy gunfights overseas and I think after a while I was just, you know, emotionally exhausted and, and the PTSD came to the surface. Um, I realised that, you know, things weren't right and I, I wanted to do something about it. On the Anzac centenary of World War I a couple of years ago, Australia spent over $550 million on commemorating the dead. We spend roughly five times more than the UK, some estimates of like 17 times more than New Zealand on those commemorations. Do you think there's a case for that money to be better spent on our surviving veterans who are alive today? Absolutely. Like in the UK, they spend about $109 per World War One veteran that has passed away. And in, in Australia, we spend approximately $8,800. So the, 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 the number pales in comparison. You know, I, I think the old saying that the Vietnam veterans came up with is uh, it's, it's great to, to honour the dead. It's, it's the right thing to do, but we've, we've got to fight like hell for the living. There are a lot of sensitivities around Anzac Day. Avengers Infinity War is coming out on Wednesday. April 25th this year. Carl Stefanovic's not happy about that. I love Thor, but let's remember and respect what Anzac Day really is for. Are you concerned about the Avengers being released on Anzac Day? No, nah, look, you know, <laughs> I would, if I wasn't working, I'd probably go myself after, <laughs> after the service. You've got stuff on. Yeah. They're not having dawn screenings of the film. Yep. I feel like you yep. can go to the dawn service and you can pay your respects. Yep. Yep. And then in the afternoon see um, Thor kick some ass. Yeah, <laughs> well look, you know, everyone can, can spend the day that, like they want and uh, I think most of the diggers would, would feel the same way about that. Uh, this time last year, Yasmin abdel uh tweeted, uh, lest we forget, Manus Nauru, Syria and Palestine. And a lot of people got very, very angry about that. What were your thoughts on the tweets and the surrounding controversy? Look, I wasn't too upset by it. You know, the refugee issue is a, a, it's a big one. It's an important one. And, you know, we need polarising people to, to bring up polarising ideas. So, look, uh, it, I, I think that it was perhaps executed, you know, slightly off skew. But, um, look, those, those rights that we enjoy to, to speak openly about these issues were provided by tens of thousands of Australians who sacrificed their lives. And, um, you know, I, I think... You know, it's unfortunate to politicise the day, but she has that right. Taliban fighters have been making gains against Afghan forces despite the support of US military trainers and advisers. ISIS was able to blitz across Iraq three years ago. The chaos and carnage of Syria's war. Do you follow the politics of the Middle East having come back home? Do you follow the kind of um, chaos and war that's carrying on over there? Uh, yeah, look, I do. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm always upset by what I see and, and especially the news coming out of Syria. It's, it's, it's horrific to see. I mean, you know, it, it is impossible for me to not think about the situation in Syria as we're going to Anzac Day, right? We, we're talking about the horrors of war, the incredible sacrifice that people make when they go to war, and our Prime Minister is not necessarily ruling out the idea of potentially being involved in a conflict there. What do you think about that? 
Look, I, I think it's a difficult one. It's perhaps well above my pay grade, <laughs> but um, I, I think that it's, it's a hard position. You know, to, to be fair, I don't think we're, we're looking after our veterans today particularly well. So I, I would heed warning to the government sending more, uh, more, more veterans or more soldiers away if, if they're not going to look after the ones we have now. Would you recommend joining the armed forces to young people? <laughs> I was just saying before, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, look, um, look I, I had a fantastic career in defence, um, but again, until the defence minister can, can stand up in front of the public and, and promise that she's actually going to attempt to start looking after our service men and women, then uh, I think I would, I would you know, approach it cautiously. Mm. And finally, just for my credibility, would you mind saying that you think I'm, I'm brave for doing comedy? You're very brave. I, I, I'm terrified of public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, we got that? Yeah. On camera? <laughs> Mick Bainbridge, thank you for talking to me. Thank you yeah. for your service and thank Thanks you so for much. continuing to fight for return service people. I hope Anzac Day works out well for you. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks, man. Yep.